Well guys, it's almost hard to believe it, but it's actually been two years since I purchased the Blue Iguana here, the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. We got a little trip today. We got a little trip today, Joel. We're going all the way down to Kendall. Richie? Oh, look at this, I get a hug. I get a hug and a new car. You're gonna be extremely happy, brother. Oh, it's already running? Ah, oh, that new car smell. We've actually hit a milestone together. We just recently rolled over 20,000 miles, and that's enough of a track record for me to really ascertain the performance and the reliability of this vehicle. And that is what we're gonna look at today. So join me on this 20,000 mile two year review. Are you gonna ask me something about my truck? I am. Is it a truck? Yeah, of course it's a truck. Paradise is found. Let's go. It hasn't all been smooth sailing and it wasn't problem free. Exhibit A, the latest recall notice I got in the mail. All right, hopefully we're gonna get some good news today. Yeah, I got a recall. Total recall. Remember that, Arnold Schwarzenegger, total recall? Hopefully this ain't a total recall, it's just a... So as you guys know, this is the limited version, so it's kind of the top of the line, if you will. It's got the leather interior. It's got a lot of the bells and whistles, including that rear pass-through window, which, to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever used. Comes in handy. But the interior itself is in really good shape. It's held up well after two years of, uh, you know, some pretty thorough use of me taking this down to the Keys, really across the entire state of Florida. You know, there's no cracks, there's nothing uh, that shows really anywhere. And for all of the negativity surrounding this knobless panel, you know, that's one advantage to not having knobs is you don't have to worry about them breaking or melting. The nitpicky kind of stuff of the fact that it attracts a lot of lint dust. Again, it is, it is pretty nitpicky, but somebody's nitpick is another person's pet peeve. So I felt that it was worth mentioning that uh, this thing is a dust magnet and it still continues to be, but no big deal. All the power functions still work, no problems as they should. I really haven't had any issues with any of the um, working mechanisms of anything with regard to the panel, the steering wheel. I even tested the steering wheel warmer, which I'll probably never use, but it's there if I need it, and it works. This is the charging port for the phone and I noticed a lot of times it's not going to light up and charge like you could see there right now it's not you have to like it's got to be in there perfectly quite often I've had to fiddle with it in order to get it to come on and show me that it's charging I don't know why that is you can see it's still not coming on it's really finicky guys I don't know if it's just my vehicle or if everyone has that problem, but my vehicle does have that issue. I mean, there you go, just came on. Now look at this, I just discovered this, guys. There's no armrest back here, but if you do happen to fit three people back here, this is a headrest I only just discovered, so it's got that. There is no middle armrest, so again, it's not a big deal, but um, to you it might be. Now how do I get this down? Oh, this little button right here. Oops. Get in there. Again, no rear armrest back here, but... So you got this convenient underseat storage here, right? In case you're cramped for room and you need some more room. Watch this. The problem is, the jack is there. So, I mean, what are you gonna put back here? Bag of peanuts? I mean, there's no room there. At least you know where the jack is now. I'm gonna tell you this. One of the things I do and I think will continue to love about this vehicle is 
the incredible looks. I never get tired of it. I really think that this is a beautiful truck. Case in point, every time I walk away from the truck and I go do something, a couple hours go by and I come back and I see it there sitting in its spot, just perps waiting for me. I just marvel at its beauty. Some people think it's ugly as hell, but again, it's just a personal preference. You might like the Maverick. One thing I noticed is that that the, uh, that the paint, whatever the coating is that they have on here is, is starting to chip away. So, you know, again, you know, little rocks and things are going to hit it. You know, should that, should that be happening after two years? I'll let you be the judge. The other thing that I absolutely love specifically about this color, I don't know if others, and put it in the comments if you do own a Santa Cruz in a different color, the, the fact that it almost never looks dirty. It is pretty dirty right now. One of the things that I've noticed is I've been washing my vehicle a lot less often than I normally would with other vehicles that I've owned. And I think it's a testament to this color. It just, it just always looks pretty and clean. You have to get up real close to notice any dirt on it. And I haven't, I couldn't tell you the last time I washed it. So guys, as most of you know, I will keep either an e-bike or a scooter back here when I'm uh, out filming things. And probably one of the reasons I've been relying on the scooters more lately, aside from just the ease of taking this out because it's so much lighter than an e-bike, um, but also the, the room that I have in here when I have the scooter as opposed to the e-bike, I have much more room. Back here, it's, it's right around four feet. One of the things that I've learned is that there's not a lot that you can do with that. It gives me advantages that I can leave the tonneau cover open and then just have things kind of hanging up in here that wouldn't normally fit if I position it the right way. This is a, this is a nice thing to have. There's my roller blades. Ooh, and an umbrella. That's actually a beach chair umbrella. But again, remember that it, can also be used as a cooler because it does have drainage in it so you could just load that thing with ice and put uh whatever kind of cold drinks you want in there to uh, bring along on your journeys with you so that's kind of a nice benefit but because of the fact that really this is a very short bed my suggestion after driving this vehicle for two years and getting to really deal with the limitations of the size of this bed is to go ahead and opt for the trailer hitch which unfortunately I did not do. I would say that if you are going to purchase this vehicle and it doesn't already have the hitch on it, try to negotiate that in as part of your deal to get them to throw in the trailer hitch. It's a lot easier and more convenient to just roll off the lot with it already there and you don't have to worry about it, you've got it. But if you add a trailer hitch to here, um, for instance, if I wanted to Put my e-bike on the outside and then i could have the scooter on the inside this way i could carry both with me it's virtually impossible even with a folding e-bike to get both a scooter and an e-bike into the back of this very small bed so is there an advantage to having a smaller bed on a truck like this well you know what i think it's really more for the symmetry of the truck for the actual aesthetics of the way the vehicle looks because another six inches just another half foot would would do a lot to make this more practical. A foot would be great, but even six inches. The problem is if you add six inches and you bring it out here, that is really gonna change the overall look and design of this truck. It's a hot truck. Because it's over 100 degrees here with the uh, heat index, so let's put some air on. I wanna just show you the latest recall notice that I got. And guys, uh, no less than five of them in two years. I, I lost track, I lost count. I have two Mini recalls. Recall. You got two recalls? <laughs> on my truck? On your truck. What's the other one? Oh, an emissions of how many recall notices I got. But this one is regarding the trailer hitch, which I don't think applies to me because I don't have it. It's the electrical harness to the trailer hitch, I think is the problem. And they sent this with pictures of it and everything. The point is you are going to get 
recalls. And I've talked to some people, I talked to some people at the dealership, I talked to some other Hyundai owners, I've gotten some comments from some of you guys that have let me know in no uncertain terms that the company Hyundai is known for recalls. It should be expected maybe even more than normal because this is sort of the guinea pig, if you will, of the first in line of this vehicle. So what's my takeaway after two years, 20,000 miles, really a lot of road trips and a lot of time spent in this vehicle, getting to know it. What is the one thing that I would change on this vehicle? It's the dual clutch transmission. Uh, that kind of scares me, to be honest with you. I've heard a lot of horror stories about problems with transmissions that have gone on people. Because this letter says that they might have to replace the transmission. That, I don't know. I'm the technician will have a look at that and see. What about the guy you lobotomized? Did he get a refund? Okay. It hasn't given me any problems yet. I had to bring it in for the uh, software uh, fix. And after that, you know, it, it's been fine. Listen, it hasn't left me stranded, not yet anyway, okay? But it's kind of herky-jerky. You can feel it. It's not, it's really not a smooth transfer of gears. And so I would just say that um, why use it? Why put it in there? I, there's no need for it. Just go with a traditional old transmission that won't let you down and will uh, switch gears more smoothly. Tell you what, all this reviewing is making me hungry. Let's go get some pad thai. This place is pretty cool. I eat here all the time. It's kind of like a fast, casual Thai, Vietnamese, Chinese. I'm gonna get soup even though it's hot. I'm gonna get the dumpling soup and I'm gonna get pad thai. Hey, how are you? I'm gonna do the beef pad, pad thai. Beef pad thai. And the um, dumpling soup. That's it. 1977. That was a good year. So guys, as far as the truck is concerned, it's been great. I mean, almost nothing is perfect in this world, right? When I buy something new, I expect it to be new. I expect it to be problem-free, at least for a little while. For the most part, this truck has been problem-free. Now, has it been hassle-free? Well, I don't think you can say that when you're uh, getting these in your mail every so often. There have been some hassles, there have been some headaches, but it's never let me down, as it shouldn't have. And I've had a few people, you know, some blowhards in the comments, oh, I'm worried about the transmission, you're worried about nothing. No, you know what? If you have the potential to have a catastrophic problem with your transmission, that is something to worry about. Especially if I'm on driving on an overseas highway somewhere, down in the Keys. Oh, soup. Nice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Keep your eyes on that. Beef Pad Thai, our first ever combination foodie vlog truck review. Throw a little bit of hoisin in there. Squeeze some lime on there. Let's give this a shot, shall we? You wish you had some. Size of that. One time. There goes nothing. There's a beef right there. This is my go to for a, a quick visit to Southeast Asia, right here in Boca Raton. You guys may be curious to know what are my favorite memories of the two years 20,000 miles and I would have to say that there are two that come to mind immediately the first is when I did a live stream over at Gilbert's and set up a chair in the back of the truck for the first time and just gazed out at the beautiful view and the second of course you guessed it sleeping in the bed of my truck 
so, yeah, without question. I would say that within two years' time, I've had more memories and, and been able to bond with this vehicle uh, more so than some people do after 100,000 miles. Onward and upward, Blue Iguana. Here's to you. Guys, one of the things that I have learned in all the years I'm driving, that whatever it is you are driving, life is short, there's a lot of great vehicles out there. Get one that you can have some fun with. Arm one and upward. You see, did you hear that? Do you feel that little hiccup? It's so, it happens from time to time dual clutch transmission. I guess it clutches dually. You see what I mean? A little herky-jerky there. So guys, in the final analysis on the Santa Cruz, after 20,000 miles and two years of driving, I would say this. I would say to expect some headaches, expect some nuisances. You want it to be hassle-free and it won't be. They're gonna get these recalls, so just be prepared for them. Okay. I got gotcha. you, so how's that gonna work? What are we gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna take it and, and do the um, necessary update. Do I need to worry about this transmission? But you know what, guys? The bottom line is, I have peace of mind because I have a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty on the, uh, on the drivetrain, on the major components of this vehicle. So if something catastrophic were to happen, they would take care of it, fix it, replace it, and uh, I'd be on my way. What in good heavens? I know a good body, man. Looks like the walls at the Spanish monastery in Miami. So if you could stomach a little stress when you're running to your mailbox to get the latest recall notice, I would say Santa Cruz is for you. I'll see you guys again at 30,000 miles. Till next time, drive safe, and me and the Blue Iguana hope to see you on the road. Paradise is found. Let's go.